Hey guys and welcome back to another Adventure and Fall tutorial. In today's video we're going to be again advancing upon the previous video I did which was creating a basic and simple quicksand system. So in that video what I did was just go over creating the quicksand so when you stand in it you do sink down into the floor and today we're going to be doing it so when the head is submerged in the quicksand you're going to start suffocating and taking damage until you leave the quicksand. And this is again very easy to build upon and adapt and customize to get it perfect for you. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you can see in the top left I've just got a print string to tell me what my health is because I haven't set up a progress bar or a widget or HUD or anything along those lines. And if I were to jump into the quicksand here, once my head is submerged under you'll see I start taking damage as you can see here. So it's going down by 5 each and every time. Again you can change that so for me it's 5 every 1 second. Easy to change and I've got a sound effect there, just a camera shutter to show you but you can obviously input your own sound effect as well. And as soon as we leave we're going to stop taking damage. And if I were to go back in, we should start taking damage again, as you can see and hear there. So when we go in, it kind of does a little bit of a glitch where it does it too many times. So are we going over fixing that as well? Because that's also a very easy fix. And again, I don't have anything to do with when you're dead, but I do have different videos on creating a game over screen or a death system and a respawn system and better ways of displaying the health as well. Today is just a simple video on showing how to make it so you only deal damage when your head is submerged in the quicksand Building upon it, I do have other videos for that as well. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up the character blueprint. So for me, that's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. And we're not going to need to open up the quicksand BP again in this video. Once we're in here, we're going to go over to the viewport, select the mesh, add component and add a box collision. And we've done that because now we have a box collision attached and parented to the mesh. So wherever the mesh goes, this box collision goes. And we're going to set the parent socket to be the head. So wherever the head goes, the box collision goes. You can now see it's going back and forth with the head like so. So again, this means that when the head is submerged, the box collision is submerged. So we're just going to want to shape and move it about to make it fit a bit more perfectly to the player's head size. So what you can do to help get it work better is select the mesh and change the animation mode to use animation asset, meaning it's not going to be moving about and shaking, making your life easier. And then you can just move it about and scale it down the scale I'm going to choose is 0.5 on the X, 0.5 on the Y, and 0.25 on the Z. So I think something along those lines is going to be good for me. You can obviously change it and customize it to get it working and look better for you, because again, it will probably be different for your different meshes as well. But for me, that is going to be good. It doesn't need to be too precise for me, but obviously get it as precise as you'd like. Because if you want as well, you could use a sphere collision, which might get a bit of a better shape for you for the head if you wanted. But for me, the box collision is going to be fine. And I'm just going to press it, press F2 and rename this to head collision or head boundary or head shape or anything along those lines. Compile, save that and go over to the event graph. In the event graph, what we're going to do is right click on the head collision box collision, add event and add on component begin overlap, right click it again and add event and add on component end overlap. So now the begin overlap is when the head is going to be submerged and the end overlap is when it's going to be out of the quicksand again. But to make sure that it is the quicksand it is overlapping, we need to come out of other actor and cast to our quicksand BP, which we made in the previous video. And that's going to be the other actor on both begin and end overlap. And again, this just makes sure that the head is overlapping with the quicksand, nothing else. And then after this, we need to set and create a new Boolean variable. So we're going to hit the plus variable here, naming this to be submerged, question mark, making sure that this is a Boolean compile, save and leave the default value as false. Then off of begin overlap we're going to set it and tick it so it's set to true and end overlap we're going to set it but leave it as false so unticked. So again this just means when this boolean is true our head is submerged under the quicksand so we want to be taking damage and when it's false we're obviously not under quicksand so we don't want to take damage. And again there are many different ways of setting up the dealing damage system which we're about to do now but I think for this system what we're about to do is going to work perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is you need to make sure that you do have a variable of health. So if you don't, just create the plus variable here, name it health, make sure it's a float and give it a default value of how much health you want the player to have by default, which for me is 100. And then after we set submerge to true, we're going to get the health. Then out of this, we're going to get float minus a float. And I'm going to set this to be minus five, but set this to be absolutely whatever you like. So however much damage you want the player to be dealt while suffocating in the quicksand. And then we are going to set the health here like so. And then out of this, we're going to get a clamp float. 
with the minimum as zero, maximum as 100, or just your maximum health. And so this means that the health will not go below zero. So when we keep minusing it by five, it will get to zero and stay at that. It will not go below it. And then out of the return value of the clamp, we want to be setting our health variable. So we're minusing it and then setting it again. So health minus five, minimum of zero, set to health like so. But now what we also want to do is we do want to move this out actually and do something just before this. And this is just to make sure that it doesn't break as you saw in the beginning. It kind of did a little bit of a glitch when we first entered it. So what we want to do is out of set submerged, we're going to get a re-triggerable delay like so, and the completed can go into the set health. And this re-triggerable delay is essentially just going to be the delay for how often the player does take damage like you would in a normal health system. So if you want the player to take damage every one second, you would input one into this delay here, which is what I want to do. I want it to be every one second. But the reason it's re-triggerable is because if the player goes in the and, and then comes out of it again and then goes back in before this is fired off, we want it to restart as if the player has gone out, taken a breath and come back in again. So the delay will restart, restarting all of its health system. So I hope that makes sense because a re-triggerable delay will restart from the beginning of the delay, i.e. one for me, if an execution has gone into it again. So if it starts and before it finishes, something goes into it again, it will restart. So I hope that makes sense. And then out of set health, I want to play a sound effect. So I'm going to do play sound 2D. You can do play sound at location, but for me in this single player system, play sound 2D is going to work fine. And again, the sound, I'm just going to do camera shutter because I don't have a sound effect for taking damage, but you just input your sound effect in there. Then after play sound 2D, we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch with a condition being submerged like so. False is going to go into nothing because if we're no longer submerged, we don't want to continue taking damage. But if we are submerged, we're going to go back into the retriggerable delay like so. And I'm going to double click this just to get some rewrite nodes, just to keep it looking nice and organized like this. So again, now what is going to happen is when our head goes under the quicksand, after a second, we're going to take damage, play a sound effect, and then if we are still submerged, we're going to take damage and so on and so forth, continuing like that. Now what we could do again to make it a bit more efficient, I suppose, is move this branch to be in front of the retriggerable delay here. And so I might actually do that as well. So I have just changed this system ever so slightly before from when I did test out earlier, which is why I'm doing this change now. So sorry about that. But again, earlier this retriggerable delay was before this branch after the play sound, but I've moved it just to make sure that we don't get that glitch, which we were getting at the start. But if we were to move this branch here, that will make it again, just a little bit more efficient. And we then also don't need that boolean there because we can just connect it into the set boolean here making sure it is true again and then the play sound 2d is going to connect into that branch that we have here and again i'll just get the root nodes to keep it nice and organized so i'll go over this again when a head is submerged under the quicksand we're going to wait a second then take damage play a sound effect and go back see if we're still in quicksand if we are wait a second take damage and just continue looping like that until we leave the quicksand or we're dead if you set that up because submerge will be false meaning this will be false meaning we won't take damage anymore so let's compile save and that's all we need to do so let's hit play to test this out you can see again in the top left i have the health on the print string so let me just show you that that's simply just event tick the health going to print string but i'm just formatting it to say health like so so we go test this out again if i had to jump into this quicksand you can see that once our head is submerged, we will start taking damage. We're not now, but our head is now under submerged in the quicksand, and we're starting to take damage, taking off five every single second. And if we were to leave, you can see that we're now no longer taking damage. But if we go back in, you can see we are taking damage like so. And again, that works perfectly. And if we were to go in, leave, go back in, you can see it's not going to do it more than it needs to. It's going to do it perfectly. You see, sometimes if we leave, it's going to keep on doing it after we've left. That's just because this branch here should maybe be in front of this retrouble delay instead of before it. So again, let's do that. So sorry again for making all these little changes, but it's just again, I've changed it ever so slightly from when I was testing out earlier, just to make it more efficient and working better for you. So we need to do it like this instead, and I will just connect that in like that. So again, what I've done there is I've just simply swapped around the delay and the branches places. So it's gonna go set submerged, retrouble delay, branch, set health and again now the play sound 2d goes back into the delay instead of the branch so i hope that makes sense now if we were to hit play and test this out again is if we were to leave the quicksand we should stop taking damage 
as you can see here. So again, head is submerged, we're now taking damage. If we leave, we no longer take damage because once the delay has finished, it is checking again to see if we are still submerged, and if we're not, we don't take damage. And again, I have plenty of different videos where we can advance upon this, i.e. adding health on screen in a widget, making it so the player can actually die and respawn and all that good stuff if you wanted. But again, what I've done now is simply when the head of the player is submerged in quicksand, we're going to be taking damage. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. We've made sure that when we are sinking in the quicksand, currently right now we're not taking damage, but when the head is now submerged, we do start taking damage again, however quickly you want it to be. So for me, it is five damage every one second, only while our head is submerged in the quicksand. And again, you can simply change how much damage is dealt by changing this minus load here, and how quickly by changing this delay here. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.